Welcome everyone to the Babylon Bee Interview Show. We are joined today by a very frightening um, figure. And we want to clarify from the outset that um, that we're not trying to platform such a dangerous We far don't right. necessarily endorse the views of this dangerous individual, mm-hmm. uh, but we wanted to just add some additional clarification for those who might be confused about some of her extremely troubling views. So we have a clip from, uh, this is all taken from uh, a, a reputable source. This is from Media Matters. It's, it's more than reputable. It's reputable. It, and re- reputable. Take a listen. Ali Beth Stuckey has used her podcast to push her fundamentalist worldview, particularly focusing on enforcing traditional gender roles and family formation. She said being a biological mother is the best thing she's done other than being a follower of Christ and a wife to her husband. Stuckey has advocated for children to be homeschooled, stating that religious parents have a responsibility to raise their children through a Christian lens. Stuckey even cited a Bible verse to suggest that women should dress with humility and modesty. Stuckey has said Christians should refuse to tell lies and love your neighbor. Well, that's pretty bad. How do we? How how are we supposed to sit in the same room as this person? It's true. Oh, thank you so much oh, for the trigger warning beforehand. That'll whoa whoa like, whoa whoa <laughs> hold on hold on. We're gonna just have that play. That'll hopefully <laughs> that'll hopefully prevent anyone from enduring the trauma of listening to me speak about. This I really hope things. so. Yeah. Personally, yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so we had Justin Horowitz as a Media Matters guy, and he said he watched hours of your anti-LGBTQ Christian fundamentalist show, and he says that you hide your hatred and bigotry behind a glitzy Instagrammable aesthetic while yeah. weaponizing your faith to attack queer people. Yeah. Your thoughts? <laughs> my thoughts on that. Well, my biggest gripe is that my aesthetic is not glitzy. He also used the word glittery, and I'm not a glittery, glitzy gal. It's actually very matte, if I do yeah. say so myself. That's yeah. how I would describe it. So that was the first bit of misinformation that bothered me. The most egregious bit. Yes, the most egregious yeah. bit, definitely. But one positive thing I was thinking, I was like, okay, he watched hours and hours of my show. Maybe he heard the gospel at some point. Maybe Justin Horowitz is going to become a Christian and there is a good and redeemable part of mm-hmm. all of this, of him watching my very fundamentalist show. Yeah, how do you get such a large fan base from Media Matters? Like, and I always wonder, like, how what percentage of the audience is just Media Matters? People like, what can we, what can we do hours? to be noticed by Media Matters more? <laughs> well, I think it's good having me on, having a Christian fundamentalist, anti everything good person Mm -hmm. on this show that'll probably attract some attention. I think they might have reporters assigned to certain people. I know that they have certain reporters like assigned to Fox and Friends or assigned to Tucker Carlson. (laughs) So it's kind of like, I don't know, a guardian angel, but whatever the opposite (laughs) is of that, follow me around. So maybe that will bring them here and And they'll say- And do you know who it is? Can we get their number? Can well, maybe it's Justin like, Horowitz. I don't know. He might Justin be... is hers, apparently. I mean, is there something yeah. we have to do? Like, do I have to be racist? Because I'll do it. I'll do it, like, right now. Right now. Yeah. Can I mean, I... you have to... Well, you have to say Bible verse, as the scary guy yeah. said in the beginning. And Fair you one. have Fair to opinion, repeat what Christians have said for thousands and thousands of years about gender and marriage. If you're that radical, um, then... And not even just Christians, him. but yeah. just people. Just and have, still in the world today, said, actually, yeah. the vast majority of people. Uh, until five yeah. minutes ago, yeah. Yeah, so do that, and I don't know. I will think back to five minutes ago and think what everyone thought then, and I'll say that out loud, and maybe they'll finally notice yeah. us. Yeah, the Asian face of white supremacy. That'll yeah. be you. Oh, man, that would be, a, that would be an honor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> an L.A. Times article on, on you. That'd yeah. be awesome. Well, welcome back to the Babylon Bee podcast, Al. You are our first guest back in 2019. And Very first. Sorry for that. Um, no, that do we really fun. have to interview her again? Because nothing's really changed since 2019. It's like, true. Life is pretty much There's, exactly it the, same the same as it was nothing three years ago. At all. No overreaching tyrannical governments. Nothing. No worldwide pandemics. Yep. So Men are still men. We could basically wrap this up women, right now, yeah. right? Well, we wanted to open with a question that a lot of our um, audience has asked us to ask you. And that is, uh, what would be the appropriate outfit to wear to a Backstreet Boys concert? Okay, so this is tough. There's a lot of things that you have to think about. You're thinking about, okay, do you want them to look out into the audience as they typically 
do. They look out into mm-hmm. the audience and they're scanning the audience for who is my biggest fan. That's yeah. what I hear that these pop stars do. And so the question is, do you want them to see you and say, wow, that girl's a really big fan because she is wearing like a vintage Backstreet Boy shirt? Girl or boy. Yes, yes, yes. Um, or do you want to, you know, look your cutest that you possibly can with a really cute outfit? So they might look out there and say, wow, that, you know, that girl's really beautiful. So that's really tough. I ultimately, when I went to a Backstreet Boys concert a couple weeks ago for the first time fulfilling the dreams that I had as an eight year old, I went with the t shirt that had their faces on them. Um, I'm sure they did notice me. They didn't say anything because I don't think they wanted to make other people feel bad. But I think they probably did notice me and said, that girl, that girl has been a fan for 20 years. So I know they did notice you. Yeah. Yeah, They told me. Yeah. Treasure in heaven is great, but it's not going to buy you a tank of gas. So let's take a moment to briefly review the current state of our economy and the global effect the war between Russia and Ukraine has had. We're in for a tough year here, and Biden's printing and spending could be catastrophic for the U.S. dollar and the market. That's why a growing number of financial analysts are recommending you diversify with gold and silver now. And the only company we recommend is Allegiance Gold. Our friends at Allegiance Gold can help you protect your IRA or 401k with physical gold and silver and have it delivered securely right to your door. The team at Allegiance Gold takes the time to educate their clients on the importance of having a financial portfolio that's diversified with gold and silver. Allegiance Gold has been one of the top precious metals firms in the nation for their commitment to protecting your hard-earned savings. They have an a from the Better Business Bureau, a five-star rating with Trustlink, and they're AAA rated with the Business Consumer Alliance. If you act now by calling them and you mention Babylon B, We'll even give you $500 of free silver on a qualified purchase. Call 844-790-9191 to get this exclusive offer. Or you can visit allegiancegold.com slash B. That's B-E-E. Call 844-790-9191. That's 844-790-9191. Or visit allegiancegold.com slash B-E-E. Yeah. Well, actually, real story, but my, my sister-in-law was at the airport and a literal Backstreet Boy came up to her and said, do we know each other? No way. Yeah, that's the short version of the story, but there, yeah, but it really happened. Wow, yeah. that's an incredible story. I don't know what I would do if that happened to me. And she was wearing a Backstreet Boy shirt. No, she wasn't. Oh. No. Okay. It would have been better. If she was, <laughs> so. In my version, she was. Yeah. yeah. So is this literally the mindset, like when young girls go to a concert, like they think... Like it's it's within the realm. There's a non-zero chance that they're gonna see. Oh, pick I me mean, out of the, when you're eight years old, which I was when I was right. a big Backstreet Boys fan. Like I'm not saying fan. now necessarily. These do no, sound like no, recent thoughts not now. too. Though. But when I was eight years old, I was thinking. I mean, I used to listen to their Black and Blue album in the game room of our house, and I used to literally cry thinking about the fact that I might not ever meet the Backstreet Boys. That's like the worst <laughs> thing that I could think of that could possibly happen to me. And I was so sure that it would happen that like. On the off chance that it didn't, that was just devastating mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. Well, we have another question for you. Who do you think would win in a speed speech competition between yourself and Ben Shapiro? Oh, Ben Shapiro would definitely win. Oh, he would sad. definitely win. I can't say that I would win. I don't even think that I talk that quickly. He talks way And you've interviewed quickly. him before, right? I have. You've exposed him for the white supremacist Nazi that he is. Uh, yes, I did do that. And because – and the reason I knew that he was a white supremacist – Nazi is because he doesn't like rap. Yeah. And so everyone who doesn't like rap, yeah. um, that's just kind of automatically places you in the racist camp. So that was, an, that was an easy one. He also, he doesn't like Kim Kardashian. And so I had to criticize him for that because, I mean, Kim Kardashian is a hero. So yeah, there were lots of things I tried to expose there. Well done. I Thank think you, you only think she speaks fast because you listen to her on like three times speed. That's yeah, tell you that's this. possible. You're just trying to possible. get through my podcast because you <laughs> yeah, think it's trying boring. to get it over with. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks at least for the download. You're welcome. I noticed that you're rocking the center part. Is that have it's you off always center, Kyle? Oh, is it? It's off center. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed. Moving on. <laughs> I noticed that you're rocking the off center part. Yeah. Explain. Yeah, so I don't know if you remember the rise of the word chuggy. Do you remember that? That was like last year or the year before. I think the New York Times even wrote an article on it. So Generation Z, I'm obviously a millennial, born in 92, right smack dab in the middle of millennials. But Generation Z, they're like driving the fashion trends as younger generations do. And they decided that like certain certain things, especially among millennial women, were chuggy. So like, I don't know if y'all can see 
like this fueled by Jesus and coffee sign. That's chuggy. They would have said that's chuggy. Yeah. Mm. Side parts, chuggy. Now, I was not swayed by that at all. I always said, I don't really care what Generation Z says. I would never move my part. You know, it was way over here. But then I don't know if they got to me just subconsciously, but over time, I just started moving it over and over again. I actually do think that there are people who listen to my podcast who actually feel betrayed <laughs> by me moving my part from the side to right here. But for now, it's here to stay. I'm nodding like I have any idea what any of this means. Yeah, yeah, parts. you can relate. Yeah, so... Uh, What's your personal favorite? Is Chugi? Oh, sorry. Probably. They would probably say that's Chugi. Um, I'm not sure what else, but yeah. So what's your personal favorite uh, Thomas Sowell book, and why is it The Quest for Cosmic Justice? Oh, really? Have I ever talked about that? How would you possibly know? Hmm. It's not like I bring it up every episode hmm. of, yeah. my, of, of my show. Yes, Quest for Cosmic Justice. That's, well, discrimination and disparities. It's not like they're like fun read. Sorry, Thomas Sowell. I know he listens to this podcast, <laughs> and so he might be offended by that. Like but the they're just well. like, I mean, you're wearing your Thomas Sowell shirt. You know, just like the mind tingle that happens when you're reading his book, and you're like, oh my gosh. He busted all of the narratives that we're hearing today literally 30 years ago. There's a book that he wrote in the 1980s called like something about, I forget the title, something about civil rights. And he's rhetoric literally, yes. Civil rights, rhetoric, yes, or reality. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Thomas Sowell expert over here. Yes. So, I mean, he is just dismantling all of the narratives on the left that are still popular today about race and economics and all of that. And so I just appreciate him so much. Absolutely. Everyone should go out and get a copy of Discrimination and Disparities and Quest for Cosmic Justice. And buckle, buckle in for a wild ride. Yes. So a few months ago, we shot a video for our YouTube channel that was called the Christian Women's Starter Kit. And you identify as a Christian woman? I identify as that, yes. Both of those things? Yes. Yeah. Um, so as a self-identifying Christian woman, we were curious how many items from the starter kit you own. Oh, so yeah. the first one is a drapey cardigan. Drapey cardigan. I probably have one somewhere in my closet. I don't know the last but time I wore it. But not a staple. Not a staple. Yeah, not a staple, yeah. How about an infinity scarf? Do you have one of those? Oh, well, I did. I used to have like a whole collection. We're talking like 2011, 2012. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what? I probably still have some that I wear in the winter. But yes, 2012 me was like this exact kind of Christian woman with the infinity scarves. Felt okay. hat, mid-calf height boots. Um, Mid-calf? Is that right here? That would be yeah. the yeah. Yeah. middle of the um, I mean, I definitely, I've got some fry boots, but they go up here. I don't have a felt hat, and okay. I don't think I ever have. So I don't know if it's that really means I'm less... Question. Yeah, I'm Are we keeping track? We, we need a counter on the screen yeah. here. Um, leggings? I own leggings. Yes, okay. I do. I also debated Ben Shapiro about leggings. He thinks women <laughs> should not wear leggings as Like in public? Yeah. Like in as, public? As or at pants. all? Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Got you. The Christian so. Woman Starter Kit Baptist Edition does not come with leggings. Yeah, yeah that's It comes true. with a jean skirt instead. This is, yeah. what is this? Is this Presbyterian, Methodist? What are we going with? Non-denomination. Non, okay, yeah. got it. Uh, women's Study Bible. I don't have a women's study Bible, you just no. Have a regular... I've just got ESV study Bible, yeah. Tragic. I'm essential oils? I do have a couple of essential oils, yes. <laughs> what, what's, the, what's the top pick? Uh, lavender and eucalyptus mm -hmm. are probably my go-tos. I've got some. I've got some more, if I'm honest. I mean, Sad. I've got tangerine. I've got peppermint. So, yeah, I'm really. Do you do all the combinations? Like, you know, these two... No, we'll I don't. I don't know okay. anything like that. And if then I also kind of got sketched out when they started doing like this is like a forgiveness combination mm. or something Forgive like that. Yeah, they have things like that. <laughs> That's like, yeah, wow. this is going to allow you racial to equity blend. You know. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> there you go. There's your next satire video. <laughs> okay. Girl, wash your face by Rachel Hollis. Oh my gosh! No, of course oh, I sorry. don't have that. It's I'm a just great read. research purpose. Uh, Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Y'all are talking about my arch nemesis. No, I do not own their books. Fierce Free Fire by Jen Hatmekar. Uh, oh, no, I don't have that one either, unfortunately. No. Tragic. What yeah. about uh, You're Not Enough and That's Okay by uh, Ali Beth Stuckey? Oh, my gosh, that sounds so good. That sounds I like the so. opposite of those lame books. It does. Do you, have, no. do you own it? I, I own a few, yeah. Yeah, I do. Do you have a chuggy Hobby Lobby sign about coffee and Jesus? Ah oh, man, I don't. I probably have some other decorations that are chuggy, but oh, not God. coffee and Jesus. Yeah. Okay, and are you part a member of any MLM? No, I'm not. But not? I did grow up in the MLM world. Did you? Yeah. The MLM Amway. Community, yeah. A little bit. Okay. Yeah. 
Would you say she qualifies as a Christian woman according she, to this criteria? It sounded like about half, a little less than half, maybe. Okay. I wasn't keeping track. But she's half Christian. You're a half Christian woman. Half woman. Half Christian. Yeah. <laughs> half, half woman. <laughs> you get These to choose. Days, anything is possible. <laughs> well, you sit in an interesting place because you're at the you're similar to where the Babylon Bee is, and that we're kind of at this intersection of Christianity, politics, culture, humor. How did you find yourself in this? being a voice into this weird Venn diagram world. Yes. So I started, well, I graduated college 2014, and I started um, working in PR and social media, and I lived in a college town, Athens, Georgia. And in high school, I wanted to, I loved Megyn Kelly, and I loved Fox News, I loved the news, and I liked politics and culture, but things just weren't quite as hyper-political back then. So it's not like I was super involved in politics. But I realized after college, wow, I'm doing absolutely nothing to involve myself in media or head towards that direction. So I didn't have any connections at all, but I decided, okay, I've got access to all of these different sorority chapters. I was in a sorority. I think I can relate to this group. And so what if I just ask if I can go into these chapter meetings and talk to them about why they should vote in the primary election. And so I created what was like a nonpartisan presentation about why politics matter and all of that. That kind of grew into a blog talking about the same thing. Then I started making videos. It was non, it was not nonpartisan at this point. It was explicitly conservative. Um, and then in 2017, I was hired by The Blaze, long series of connections, and then that just kind of evolved into what I do now, started my podcast in 2018, and during that time, I started to kind of mix more theology and culture with my uh, political commentary, so there was a lot of speaking across the country, going on TV and talking about these things, and then over the past few years, it's just kind of grown into what it is. That's awesome. Yeah. And you're you're very vocal and you have very strong opinions on all your social media platforms and you you state like your opinions boldly regardless of how they might rub people. How thick of a skin do you have to have in order to face the potential backlash that your strong opinions might incur? Yeah. I feel like I'm ve- well, I feel like I'm very gentle. Some people mm-hmm. probably think I'm too harsh and then other people it's like I would say the people who are just Christian commentators who don't talk about politics, they mm-hmm. probably think I'm way too mm-hmm. harsh. They would say that my tone is too harsh or that I'm not empathetic enough or whatever it is. But then you've got the political commentators who think that I'm just like the most, you know, the gentlest person ever. <laughs> um, and so I do try to strike the balance. There are plenty of things that I want to say that I ask my husband, is this too mean? Should I say this? He typically says, no, it's not too mean. Definitely say it. <laughs> and I a lot of times don't. And so I try to have a filter and you know, strike that balance of, you know, speaking the truth in love. Mm-hmm. I know that it's cliche. Um, I tend to probably lean more on the side of truth than I do Absolutely. being gentle about it. You do have to have a thick skin. That doesn't mean that I don't care what anyone says ever, but it does kind of start to roll off you. Eventually you realize whose opinion matters, yeah. what opinion matters, what you should take to heart and maybe consider is this fair criticism and what you shouldn't. Well, you, you you tweeted last month, the appropriate response when a leftist accuses you of being a dash-phobe or dash-ist isn't, no, I'm not, it's, I don't care. Yes. <laughs> so there's a little yeah. bit of that, like, where is the cur- criticism coming from, you know? Yeah. Like at the Babylon Bee, we, we had criticism coming from progressive Christians right from the beginning, and we're like, oh, great, we're doing the right thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, I mean, these words just don't mean anything anymore. Maybe right. if they were reserved for very explicit and specific instances of hate and bigotry, okay, you'd say, wow, am I really? But when they throw it out, out so much for so many reasons that have nothing to do with any form of hate or bigotry, it just... It doesn't matter anymore. The truth is what matters. I mean, and ultimately, we feel that the truth is on our side. It's just with such polarizing topics, like, do you ever find that there's a balance between speaking the truth in love, as you said, and trying to maintain your witness by, I don't know, being, getting along with people, you know? Yeah. Well, so, yes, I I don't, I don't desire to not get along with people, of course. Of course. Like, yeah. I do think about people in my church. There are people in my church who don't know what I do. There are probably, I mean, there are definitely people in my church who know what I do, but I never bring up 
politics yeah. in person. I never bring up my job. I don't bring up that kind of stuff because I don't want people to think that that's all I'm thinking about yeah. or that I have some like purity test in my head that if they don't agree with me on certain things, I think that they're a bad Christian or even a bad conservative or something. I'm not thinking about that in my personal life. And I've worked really hard to kind of separate those things and forge those friendships in a very organic way. So the people who know me know that I am very open to different views and discussions and things like that on, I mean, when I say open to different views, I'm not going to be mean to someone because they disagree with me, even though I'm very sure um, about the positions that I have. But yeah, I don't care as much as I used to about offending people online. I don't purposely do that. I don't consider, I'm not a troll, of course. I don't, I'm not purposely divisive, but with so many people and especially so many Christians constantly caveating every true thing they say, I do think people are hungry for someone to just say what is real. So speaking of getting along with people, we have a little game where we would like you to pick a progressive for each of these scenarios. Okay. Pick one progressive to help you survive on a remote island after your plane flying home to Texas crashes. Um, okay, a progressive to help me on... A You're dis- on a remote island. You guys have to like survive or maybe build a, a, a radio out of coconuts Someone or whatever. Someone you could work with. Someone that you could work with to survive who would be a good progressive this is to reach across really the This really tough to... Okay, can you ask me the other questions too and I'll think about sure. all of the these. The second one is just to grab a coffee with. Okay, so the grab a coffee one is a little bit easier because I've thought about this before. I feel like if I could just t- talk, talk to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, if I could just sit her down and be like, girl, okay, we're basically the same age. I feel like we could relate on some things. Like, let's talk about what's really going on here. Let's talk about some of your ideas. I feel like we could probably get along in some ways. She would not be the person I would want to be stuck on a deserted (laughs) island with. I can't even think about. I I don't even know what kind of person that, I don't know. Well, who who would you say? Oh, I, I just asked the questions. Um, I... I would grab a coffee with Barack Obama because he seems like he'd be fun to just hang out with. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, I'm just trying to think, like, who's a scrappy Democrat? I don't know. I wouldn't pick Bernie Sanders. He wouldn't do any other work. No, he's way too last old. Very long. Yeah. I don't know. I would probably pick someone in the culture rather than, like, a politician, like someone who's on the far left that's actually accomplished something in their lives. I don't know, like an actor or... A... Well, maybe if I picked... Oh, I guess actors. Well, maybe if I picked... Joe Biden. Like Tom Cruise. He's probably a... I, I, he's oh. short. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Like it doesn't have to be... I, I, it doesn't have to be a politician. It doesn't have to be a politician, so, right? Just a progressive. Leftist. Someone who's on the left. Oh, okay. So... Like The Rock, think, is he left Do you lefty, think Chris no? Pratt is a progressive mm, in some Just ways? by being in LA, you probably are. Yeah, okay. Well, then I feel like... But I don't... I, I, I wouldn't... I don't think you, I'm going to allow you to pick Chris Pratt. No. Of all people. Because um, I wouldn't put him like... He's... He's, Maybe he's like more, Matthew. He's probably a little closeted. He might be a progressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can pick McConaughey. Oh, I can pick Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Okay. He's buff and utilitarian. Yeah, yeah I feel like, I feel like and people yeah, like yeah. any of these people. It needs to be a famous person because then someone will come looking for us. I asked That's my good. audience, Absolutely. "Would yeah. you rather be stuck on a deserted island with Bill Gates or your least favorite ex boyfriend?" And a ton of people said Bill Gates because then people would come looking for us. No one cares about my ex boyfriend. That's a good point. And then the final one is a progressive that you would have to work with to enact real policy change in this country. LOL. <laughs> the question says LOL. Okay, probably like Kirsten Cinema. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. That's easy. Or Tulsi Gabbard, if she is even considered a progressive. Not today. Not today. Not today. Yeah. Yeah. She's been excited. Far right. have picked her five years ago. Yeah. So you've made some wonderfully satirical pieces poking fun at both the left and the right. And, the right. and obviously at the B, we're no strangers to satire and poking the beast. But um, at the same time, you know, there are biblical references where uh, God tells us to respect our authority figures. Yeah. And like, how do you find the balance? I mean, obviously, that's something that we, we think about regularly. Yeah. Um, but where do we find the balance between criticizing ideas and criticizing people just because they're funny? As an example, you had the recent Elizabeth Warren sketch, yeah. which was hilarious. So chiefly, we'd like to powwow with you about how how you can be so mean to this brave indigenous woman of color mm-hmm. just because she's not in your tribe. <laughs> We're open to all ideas. It's a big tent here. A big teep, yeah, yeah. Teep, a big teep, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Wow, I wish I could think of more puns off the top of my head, but I can't. <laughs> we got all of them. We Unfor- did all of them. You had nothing. We spent yeah. a few hours writing these ones out. So. Uh, yeah. 
Um, they would be way too obvious. Like, how do I, how do I bring wigwam into this? That's not going to work. <laughs> so anyway, I, you know, I actually did think about this because we are called to yeah. respect the people who are in authority. Is it possible to mock them and respect them at the same time? Because just coming from like my personal perspective or just a practical perspective, I think that it can be a great benefit to society to mock the people who take themselves seriously, who are in power because they are actually using power to oppress. In this case, I was making a real point about the ridiculousness of Elizabeth Warren saying that she is going to shut down these pregnancy centers who are working so hard, so tirelessly for the vulnerable women that the left says that they care about and their children and all of the families involved. So in my mind, it's actually like the most polite way that I can Mm. highlight the cruelty and the wickedness of what she did. I mean, I don't think that I made fun of her as a person. Mm. I mean, maybe I did a little bit, but I don't know. I think that there is such, obviously you guys know this, I don't have to say this to y'all, but there is such benefit to satirically making a point in a way that you can't do through literalism. And I just think that that is beneficial to society. I think it kind of liberates us from these super self-serious and self-righteous leaders who really are trying to obtain as much power and capital as possible at our expense. Um, I actually think it's a really nice and polite way to do that. Now, obviously, I have to respect authority in the sense that I have to obey the law. Um, And in this country, really, the Constitution is our authority. There's a reason that we call them public servants. They're supposed to work for us. It's really supposed to be a government by the people. Really, we're supposed to be in charge, not Elizabeth Warren or the president or anyone. And so there is that way to look at it, too. I don't know if that's like a so actually, around, we are the authorities that God has placed over them. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they must exactly. And themselves. she's disrespecting me. <laughs> and yeah, that's probably not the only biblical command well, that Elizabeth and, Warren isn't following. And tone matters in humor. Like your Elizabeth Warren character isn't going around like, oh, I'm an idiot. You know, <laughs> like your Elizabeth yeah. Warren character is like very, it's almost a loving satire of her and you're putting her in the scenario with the yeah. pregnancy. Scenario. I mean, but I'm curious what y'all think about that. I know y'all are the ones asking the questions, but obviously you have the hilarious joke that works every time that AOC trips over shoelaces because Mm -hmm. she is very stupid. So do you see that as like a disrespect of American leaders? Americans are discovering that if we want to change the nation, we have to change the way the marketplace works. And that change starts with you, with your local communities, and with your wallet. Be deliberate with your dollars and reject woke corporations. Imagine a world in which every single dollar you spend would go towards companies that share your values for life, liberty, and patriotism. Now with the Public Square app, you can. Public SQ, or Public Square, is an app and website that connects freedom-loving Americans to the community and companies that share their values. Engage in a nationwide platform with the largest directory of patriotic businesses and consumers all while accessing exclusive savings at businesses that see the world the way you do. The marketplace is free to join for consumers and business owners alike. To get started and shop your values, download the Public Square app from the App Store or Google Play, or click on the link in the video description. No, it's a very loving satire, because we're saying that she's so stupid. Yeah. But it's also speaking the truth. That she ties herself... Up yeah. with her because she dies and she's dumb. It beats verbally accosting <laughs> her on the Capitol steps. Okay. I think. Yeah. Well, whatever, I don't know, theological interpretation this just was, <laughs> I'm on board with it. And too. we call, since we are the authority, we call upon you, AOC, to submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to us as a human institution, whether as to a king, as to the one in authority. There you go. First Peter 2.13 off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I don't know what this question is, so I'm just going to read it. What do you perceive to be a greater threat to society, the vilification and societal ostracization? Google didn't think that was a real word. Vilification and societal ostracization of boys or the self-love movement and simultaneous contradict... Did you write this? Simultaneous contradictory self-hate ideology of transgenderism that is prolific among girls. Take your time. I got it. No, I you, totally have it. Yeah, so it. self-hatred among boys and the self-love slash self-hatred among girls that is manifesting itself understand. in the gender stuff. Um, well, I think that anything that targets 
masculinity is going to be more harmful than that which targets femininity. Although I don't think that you can like extract those two things. They're going to be dependent on each other in every society. And so of course you want healthy masculinity and healthy femininity. But if we had healthy masculinity, you probably wouldn't have the the denigration of femininity that we have. So I do think it always starts there because there has been no society or civilization that has been created by women. It's all been created and mm. conquered and fought for and defended by men. And so that seems like a very integral part to the survival of any civilization of any country. I would think that it's more important that we get masculinity right. It seems like everything else would flow from that. Of course, as a woman, I see more closely kind of the... Um, and can feel more deeply what it would be like to be a girl growing up that's a tomboy and all of a sudden because you don't want to wear a dress, you're told that you're a boy. That makes me really sad and I can understand the dangers of that. But if I had to choose what the bigger threat is, any assault on masculinity, I would say is more dangerous. Got it. So men are more oppressed. Okay. So a few years ago, uh, I was actually really impressed. I was listening to your program and you had addressed that one of your listeners had written in and and – basically criticized you for using rather colorful language on your program. And instead of trying to defend yourself, you immediately said, you know what, I'm taking this to heart. And you've, you've stuck to it ever since. Yeah. What was the basis of that conviction? And, uh, and yeah, what, what was the, what was the foundation of that conviction? Yeah. So I, can you say the words that she said? <laughs> no, I can't say I can't. it, but one of my, one of my first episodes, I think I used like the word like bad A or something like, or like, I don't even know. I think I was being sarcastic mm. about, but I did use it. And I just remember a listener wrote me in and was, or wrote in and was like, you know, you don't have to do that. It doesn't add anything. And honestly, like as a follower of Christ, you should be above reproach. She was like, I'm not saying that you're not a good Christian or anything like that, but you should consider your speech. And one time I also cussed in, um, in a tweet a few years ago. And my brother, who I really respect, was like, you don't need to say that. And I was like, I really don't. I really don't. It actually doesn't add anything to what I'm saying. It's not above reproach. It's not holy speech. And so, I mean, there are a lot of other ways that you can have unholy speech rather than, you know, it's not just cuss words. But for me, I realize that there really, I mean, there really is no reason for me to do it, especially as I got more moms that listen to my show, right. knowing that they have their teenagers listen, that they're even listening in the car when they're picking up their young kids from school. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to push those people out. Um, and there are times, there are times that I really want to, I really, really want to, especially when you're talking about particular people and what they're there is like seeing on society. Except for swear words. Yeah. And so I just, you know, I decided not to. It's not that I think that Christians who cuss, you know, aren't good Christians. It's just a standard that I have that I have stuck to. Well, I, I, I was really impressed. And as Thanks. the as the local prude at the Babylon Bee. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thumbs up. Well, we're, all, we're all, relatively speaking, we're all a little prudish. Yeah. But there are many, many words that I do not say Except that for I don't even believe are swear words, but I won't say them. So in this day and age, major corporations often hate your guts yeah. because you believe in biblical truth or even just normal stuff that normal people thought five years ago. What is the line that a company has to cross before you decide you can no longer hand them your money? What store or product was the hardest for you to personally let go? Allie Beth Stuggy. Well, I still have a hard time with Amazon. Okay. Because, and I've gone through seasons of not buying from Amazon. Oh. And then I do because it's just like, you know, you're, especially with kids, like you're in a jam, you're like, oh, I need a new toothbrush or diapers or whatever it is. It's right on my phone. You can just do it. It's so much easier oh. than going out and about. So that has been really hard for me. I really go back and forth because they, yeah, they're awful. I mean, they pay for abortions. And so, but then I, I don't know if you are responsible for boycotting every single company that goes against your values. I do think that you can pick and choose, or maybe I'm just a wild hypocrite and I shouldn't be shopping from Amazon. I'm totally open to that option as well. But I did decide that I wasn't going to shop from Target a few months mm -hmm. ago. That was really hard because Target is like an activity. Absolutely. It's not just a place that you go for necessities. It's like a whole thing that you do for fun. Um, but 
when they started selling chest binders for girls, I was like, that's just, for me, this is going to be the one that I give up. And it's kind of like cussing. Like when you do it, you think that you have to do it and that it's appropriate and that you could never give it up. Um, but now I've realized I really don't need Target. I think it's been three months, which is by wow. far the longest that I've gone without it. Three-month and- chip. Awesome. Yes, yes. So um, actually, uh, if you want to reach under your chair really quickly, there's something adhering to the bottom of your chair. Oh, really? Yeah. Right there. And we just wanted to test your commitment right now. This is a uh, wow. wow. This is a five dollar Target gift card that is yours to keep. Oh my gosh. This is like a ceremony. Or you can put it in the shredder. Could I give it to someone? Uh no. It's, no. This no. is binary. Okay, so I couldn't even much give like, it to a homeless person who was no, looking you, for a meal. You much would like rather genders, me, this you is would a binary rather choice. me shred it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. wow, she that, did it. That was really symbolic. Does that feel good? Yeah, it feels really good. Okay. <laughs> well, it's five dollars. We a twenty dollar gift card. Twenty dollar gift to card Target. to Target. Oh my gosh, that's just a lot of money, to see. though. I just feel bad for giving that up. And you can. Yeah, either... but are you? The question is, are you principled or are you not? That's the real question. Well, I am principled, but I don't know if everyone has to be as principled as me. Mm-hmm. And so I feel bad about shredding this. You don't have a choice. It's, I it's bet it's not even one, $20. One or the other. You probably got me you know, like a $1 gift card. You no. just wrote $20 no. on there. It says 20 on there. It says 20. It says 20. Oh, this and is Sharpies the, are this binding. official Target yeah, It font. says 20 yeah. Yeah, on yeah. there. Yeah. Okay, Sharpies I'm are binding. shred it. I feel really bad, but it's not my money. So <laughs> She did it. And finally, we have a one hundred dollar gift card to Target. It says okay, well, here's the that question: you can either keep here's or a, well, now you know. I'm starting to think through the spend, ethics. I'm starting to think through the ethics of this. You could buy a lot of chest binders with. Okay, it. do you? The question is: you should be asking yourself: is do you like chest binders? Okay. And the indoctrination of the trans ideology. Okay, on but children. question: you guys have already spent the money. You guys have already supported Target. Well, I by getting something from Target. Well, would not be supporting Target because I wouldn't be spending any money. What do we think about that? But what if you spend over a hundred dollars and then I you, would never. And then you have to. I like, would never. I would only spend ninety nine dollars. Just but to what make about sure. tax? You didn't think about the tax. I would only spend ninety eight dollars. She would leave. She would spend the ninety nine and leave the one. Mm-hmm. Yes, I. A hundred dollars. Well, I don't know because you guys have already spent it. I uh, wish I, I could. Be broker. Yeah. No, I. Hey. Biblical conviction. I Probably will shred it. I will shred it if that means that I don't want to, you know, make anyone, like, I don't want to make anyone out there compromise. So I will shred the $100 gift card, even though I think ethically I could probably get away Uh, with it. No, no, no. You passed the test. Wow. That was really tough. You passed the test. Wow. She's very committed. Yeah. All right. Well, now that you have passed the test, we can continue the interview. And um, how many cats do you have? I don't have any cats. You don't? No, not anymore. Brandon indicated that you are good at coming up with cat names. I did have a Rachel McAdams, um, but that was my husband, to be fair. He came up with that. I love Rachel McAdams. Well, you have to pretend to be good at naming cats because we made up a whole game about it. (laughs) Oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. You'll put me on the spot with this kind of thing. Um, Okay, I'll try. Well, the hard part's over. You shredded the target cards. Okay. So my wife has a document of hundreds of cat names, literally hundreds of cat names, and these range from Stroopwafel to Savage Peanut to Lackluster Intern. Is my arm making you uncomfortable? And sometimes I'm afraid that, like, she expects us to go through all of these hundreds of names and own, like, every single one. Savage Intern? Did I say that? Lackluster Intern. Lackluster Intern. Okay, Lackluster Intern is her name for a cat. (laughs) I, I like your wife. She sounds really funny and cool. Good. I, yeah. I like her too. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So uh, do you I like her. do you have a, a cat list name as well? I don't have a list. So I did have two cats and we ended up, ended up giving them to people that will love them. But one was named Sweatpants and we were originally going to name him Cat Damon. It just didn't stick. And so I don't know how we came up with Sweatpants either, but his name was Sweatpants. So kind of like, I don't know, lackluster intern. Yeah. That's the same kind of vibe. And the other one was Rachel McAdams. We would call her Rachel. And then we ended up thinking it's like kind of hilarious to have just very mediocre human names. Or sorry, not mediocre, but just average human names for All animals. Rachels I know. Yeah, it's mediocre. just funny because we would talk about Rachel and people were like, oh, is that your daughter? No, <laughs> it's not. It's our cat. 
That's great. Well, we have a selection of cats for you to name. So, uh, what would you name? Uh, what would you name this cat? He's like in a pant leg. Very Ooh, cute. Oh, probably Smoopy. Snoop. Smoop. Did you say <laughs> yeah. Smoopy? Yeah, with an M. Oh, Smoopy. Smoopy. What does that mean? I don't know. That's just the first thing that came to mind. I feel like I could just like. She has a gift. I it's could, acceptable. I could just smoosh yeah. his little face and say, "Oh, Smoopy, Smoopy, Smoopy. Smoopy, Smoopy." Yeah, that's acceptable. Okay. Yeah, we'll right. allow it. All right, uh, here's another one. This guy's got a little suspicious look. He's sitting on a chair. Oh, uh, yeah. A little side eye there, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I would say probably Luther. Oh, that's a good name for that. Cat. Yeah. Like DCI Luther. What? No, never mind. Forget it. Forget <laughs> yeah. It. He just seems like really serious, and I've never met a silly Luther. Oh. Um, Do you want to describe this one, uh, Brandon? Would, would I would describe this one personally as the best, softest cat in the world. That is this your cat? It is. Okay. <laughs> This is a black cat, uh, you know, looking up, very cute looking, very fluffy. Uh, Kayla. Hmm. Kayla. Yeah. What's the cat's actual name? Fable. Oh, it has, it's a Fable. similar, like, uh, sa- cadence yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. She has Two a syllables. She yeah. does have the I gift. Sh- we wow. just knew. Yeah. She's got the shinin. Uh, this is a red, orangish cat that's, like, jumping. Jumping up in the air. Looks like he's trying to For the audio get a listeners. bird. For the audio oh, listeners, yeah. Um, I would probably go with Barb. Kind of, no. I don't know. Kind of. <laughs> it does look. Like, it looks like Barb from Stranger Things. Very, <laughs> you know, it kind little... of does. It kind of does. Yeah, Barb probably. That's All a right. great name for that cat. Actually, wow, it's a you good are cat good name. At, you are very good at this. Uh, okay, is this our last oh. one? This is a very fluffy. Looks like a ball. It's almost. an odd shape. Oh, definitely. I'm Percy. not sure this is real. Percy. 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 <laughs> That's a good name for that. Yeah. yeah. And I think we have is one it, more. Is it a? Maybe pun? I could see it having a double name like. Percy Q or oh, like yeah. Percy James or like, like the double. You have a double name as well. Yeah, I have Ali Beth. Yeah, and so I could see this being like Percy John, John Percy. That uh, John Percy could John be a great Percy. name wow. for that. Cat, and is per think? a pun? Is it per? Oh, see, I didn't think of yeah. that. Oh, and we wow. have one more. This is one more. What would you name oh gosh. this little guy? He's, he's cute. He's got a little little hat on, little fedora, <laughs> little scar. He's seen some is action. This, is this from Cats the movie? Yes. Because I have not seen that, so I don't know this cat's actual name. I don't either. But what would you I name would, him? Um, probably like Damon. Damon. Cat Damon. Cat yeah, Damon. Cat Damon. There you wow. go. The second. Yes. Cat Damon the second. Wow, that's wonderful. Um, hey, Travis, can you come in here now? Coming up next, for Babylon Bee subscribers. Hello, Travis. Call all longer. the interns the They're all just name. Travis. <laughs> yeah. So I have five quotes from... Your book, You're mm-hmm. Not Enough and That's Okay, mm-hmm. and Rachel Hollis's book, Girl, Wash Your Face. Yes. So I'm going to read a quote, and all of you are going to guess which book it's from. This is going to be really tough because I actually wrote my, I just kind of copy and pasted her book mm-hmm. oh, and okay. onto, onto That's my a good point. book. This has been another edition of the Bee Weekly from the dedicated team of certified fake news journalists you can trust here at the Babylon Bee. Reminding you that someone out there knows something about Carmen. And we're going to find them.